Hey your vision fans, it's time for another Junior Eurovision video and today I'm going to be talking about who I think could win Junior Eurovision 2023 in Nice, France. It's a really high quality show, so many great acts. I'm going to go through who I think are the main favourites and also who are some of the dark horses. I saw all the rehearsals today in the dress rehearsal so I'm going to give you my opinion on who I think can win. So let's keep it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So as you can see, I'm in Nice right now. I'm in one of the interview rooms. I wanted to find somewhere quiet because the press room is buzzing. Lots of people doing interviews and giving podcasts and whatnot. So I had to find my little quiet place. So first of all, I gotta say, I know it's very cheesy, but I have to say all 16 of these acts are winners. Really super impressed by the ability of these young people to get up on stage. Everyone's been incredible singing wise performance they've just all really shone so i think this shows that there's really good support networks behind the scene because all of these kids are being set up to succeed really everyone's looked great i also think it's harder to put my finger on who is actually going to win i think one of the big interesting things about junior eurovision is the fact it's much less predictable than adult eurovision where with all the data from spotify and streaming and odds and all that we kind of get a little bit of a spoiler about who's in who's in the running to win. Whereas with Junior Vision, we don't have that information. It's way more unpredictable. The other big difference between Adult and Junior Vision is the voting system. So the jury is very similar, but the televote is done differently. You can vote from all over the world and you can also vote for your own country. And then the points given in the televote sequence are just a percentage of the total votes received. So quite different from Adult Eurovision in that aspect. So whereas with Adult Eurovision, I usually pick out like two, three countries. I can see almost anybody winning. Last year, Lissandra won for France. Nobody expected it at all. Although I'm gonna give you who my favorites are, it could be anyone and I would love it if I was wrong. I would love there to be a surprise winner and just show the strength of the competition this year. So starting off with my first potential favorite, it is The Hosts France. <laughs> This is so incredibly slick. This is the best of everything. It's great songwriting, it's great singer, great production. The show looks incredible. The choreography is really high standard. They've been working with the same choreographer now for I think the last five or so years. The cinematography is fantastic. The story, she starts playing the piano and then she goes around and gets up onto the piano. The LEDs are amazing. France gets you New Eurovision. They haven't been outside the top six. They've been on this incredible streak lately. They really, really know what they're doing. This team is really fantastic. So although I know some people would prefer that we had like a different winner each year, it is very possible that we'll, we will be coming back to France. And I have to say they put on an absolutely spectacular show. So if they do host again, we have that to look forward to. The way I see this not winning is if something riskier overtakes it. So as solid as this is, as a really fantastic junior Eurovision entry, there's nothing in it that's very like risky or dangerous or new. So maybe there's a potential for something that's a little bit more out there to come in and possibly win. So that's the main way I would see this not winning. But I think this is almost guaranteed to be top three. Again, France have never been outside the top six. So top six is definitely guaranteed. Now, while we're on the topic, let's go to our second favorite. And this is another country who definitely gets junior vision. And that is Armenia. <laughs> So the press poll was done after the performance today. We all went into the stadium and we watched in the arena. It was pretty empty. And this ended up coming seventh in the press poll. But I think the reason for that is that this performance is very much focused by what's on the screen. So while we're watching, we're obviously looking at the stage. We aren't looking at which camera cuts are actually being shown to the audience at home. This has a lot of sharp angles. It has a lot of moving parts to it. So I think this is more tailored towards the home audience. So I think a lot of those like cool, quick effects that come up on the screen, we missed that. So that could be potentially why Armenia really know what they're doing in Junior Vision. This has got really super cool. Their outfits kind of like different Power Rangers from the future. We've got this dragon which comes on the stage, which is going to be a real wow moment for people who don't know about it. Even if you know about it, it's still a wow moment as well. The girls are dancing really great. They've all got their own little personal style. They sound really good as well. So I was a little bit worried, is this going to sound like the studio version it really really does it's had a small revamp as well they've added in a little bit of nice kind of vocal harmonies which really elevated even further so Armenia have never been outside the top nine in junior vision ever 
that's not changing. They're definitely going to be top line. I do feel there's a little bit of an overlap with this in terms of this like cool girl group with the UK. However, I feel the UK is that skews a little bit older, maybe kind of like 12 to 14, whereas this feels a little bit younger, kind of like nine to 12. So that could differentiate them enough. It's really age appropriate. It's super fun, that K-pop vibe, the visuals look really cool. So yeah, you can never write Armenia off. And if they do win, it'll mean that we'll have had a winner pattern of France, Armenia, France, Armenia. So we're just going back and forth like ping pong between France and Armenia. Again, these are the two big powerhouses in Eurovision this year. But don't worry, I think there's lots of other potential countries who come in, could come in and spoil that pattern. And let's talk about one of those countries and they definitely want to get their hands on that trophy and that is Spain. <laughs> Now, Spain for me is very similar to France in that this is a very clever strategic entry which feels very appropriate for Junior Eurovision. It's got this fantastic imaginative adventure story going on in the LEDs. The LEDs are probably the best ones that are aimed at children really age appropriate, super fun, imaginative. And I think that's gonna capture a lot of kids' imagination. This feels similar to France Lissandro last year in that it's just got its finger on the pulse for what is appropriate for the show. Now, we know that this has been drawn first and nobody has ever won from the first position. In fact, no one's even been top three from the first position. So they're gonna have to break down that barrier if they do wanna win. But I feel like this does have a lot of support. Spaniards are really behind it. With that rest of the world aspect that I talked about in the televote, maybe people in Latin America, etc., might able might be voting for this as well. So Spanish is a huge international language. If this does get a huge amount of public support, then it's very possible that Spain win the televote, even from the first running order. That would be very interesting if it happened and it would show that running order can't kill you. Okay, let's go to another one of the kind of safer favorites and that is Netherlands. <laughs> Now this is closing the show and interestingly when we were in the arena today obviously everything's quite empty so you don't get the real buzz atmosphere that you're going to get when the show is actually on. The jury show tonight will have an audience and then the final tomorrow will have an audience as well and I think people are going to go absolutely crazy for this and we've seen how when you have a big crazy tumultuous song that's closing a semi-final or a final it can really get a huge public support as a big party bop to end the show and that could happen with this and if it does it's going to get a lot of public votes. I think people are really going to go crazy and get dancing because there's nothing else that has this like really hard EDM dance beat going on. Netherlands have been super dedicated to the contest. They haven't missed a single edition. They are the country who's been there the most out of anybody. So I'd love to see them get rewarded for that consistent dedication with a second win. I also think it's deserving as well. I think this is a really, really great and risky song. Sepp unfortunately seems to be having a couple of problems with his voice. I think his voice is lowering a little bit since they had the national final. I think the Dutch delegation are gonna work around that as much as possible. He's been saving his vocals during the rehearsals but presumably during the jury show tonight, he'll just give it his all and then to see how it goes. But great to see that the Dutch team are all working together. They've got three dancers and the DJ and then Yasmin. So these five people can really help him out. So great to have that team and support around him to ensure that the show goes as good as possible. But yeah, I would love if Netherlands got rewarded for sending something so risky and get that second win. So that's the Netherlands. Okay, now I'm gonna start talking a little bit more about my dark horses. So for one reason or another, I think these songs can definitely win, but there's one kind of thing that's making me a little bit doubtful about that. So let's go to the first one of those, and that is the UK. which did really well today in the dress rehearsal. People really, really love this. It's super slick looking. UK are definitely going through the Renaissance. This delegation are really ambitious. They've got great ideas. They're trying out new things. They're trying to be more modern and cool. And this really comes across. I think you're gonna be really impressed with this staging. The girls look and sound great. I feel they're really empowered by the fashion. They were saying in the press conference that they had a say in the customization of their outfits. And I think that comes across on how confident they look on the stage. So that's a really clever, small detail that I think really great delegations do. This thing, the slight doubt I have with this is just, I don't know if we've seen staging that's this kind of immersive. Like it almost doesn't look like they're on the stage at some points and it's quite dark. It's got like a 
Batman Gotham feel. So it's more just the fact this kind of darker style of staging is a little bit unprecedented. Last year they had very cool staging and they ended up winning the televote. So maybe that might be a good sign for them this year. But then again, you've also got the jury. Will the jury like how kind of maybe this is a little bit more mature, a little bit darker? I'm not sure, but it's very slick. The dancers coming in halfway through look amazing. They're dancing on these cubes. All the visuals look super put together. Really impressive from the UK delegation. Even if this doesn't win, this is further improvement. are making lots of really good small decisions in lots of ways. Okay, another dark horse is Fia from Germany, one of what the... The reason I'm putting this in as a dark horse is I think if it does win, it'll be because of the jury vote, which has a little bit more power than the televote. Because people can vote for multiple people, we get to see the slight evening of the televote where there aren't big gaps. Whereas with the jury, you can have quite a big lead. You can just dominate the jury. That could happen with this in the jury. It's got a real deep meaning. It's beautiful on stage. It's got a different sound and feel from everybody else. And I think this personal touch really comes across and it could really touch some of the jurors. And if that's the case, this could do really, really well. I can also see a world where this kind of just goes over, over people's heads. Maybe they don't understand the full story behind it or they're not feeling it. It's got more of a steady buildup, so it's not like big explosions and whistles like some of the other stagings. So I can see this coming first. I can see this coming 12th. I hope it doesn't come 12th because I really want Germany to get their first top 10 at Junior Eurovision. Top 10 anywhere since Michael Schulte in 2018 and Al at Eurovision. So I really, really want Germany to be rewarded for this super thoughtful, lovely song with a really great story behind it. But yeah, I, it's so really, it's, it's, it's such a dark horse. I have no idea how this is gonna do. I really hope that it just is top six. But if it won, I think it would be a very deserving winner because it is totally in the spirit of the contest. Another dark horse, so many dark horses, I need to open up a stable. And this dark horse is North Macedonia. So gorgeous song, you know, this is my number two this year. I love how beautiful it is. Staging wise, it's quite simple. Tamara's really just on the stage on her own. She starts off with this beautiful ice moon backdrop and then it evolves into her being in this gorgeous Japanese garden. She's got this cool hood on which she takes off halfway through. She's an absolute superstar. She really is amazing. Her vocals, her presence, her ability to perform on the stage on her own. She's carrying the whole performance on her back. Like there's nobody else helping her. She's just there on her own doing her thing and she does hold her own amazingly. I just wonder though, is, the, is this possibly gonna be overshadowed by some of the kind of more big budget performances you're gonna see? We've got dragons, we've got pian heart-shaped pianos, we've got big explosions, and then maybe this could be something that's just a little bit too simple to win. As a performer, she's definitely a winner. Absolutely, she is that winner standard that we've seen before. I would love if this came top four because North Macedonia has never been top four in junior or adult Eurovision ever. I would love them to break that glass ceiling. Would love if this one, very similar to Germany, it's gonna need a big jury score to do that and then not be bought down too much in the televote. So I think it has a very similar path to Germany. But it's not impossible because vocally she's so super strong. So that's what I'm putting in. It's a very dark horse. It's like a jet black dark horse. But that is North Macedonia. So many potential winners. It really is wide open. I can just see. And the thing is, even these eight I'm talking about, the other eight, I could see someone swooping in and doing really well. I think all the other eight as well, the way they swoop in and win is through the jury. But my eighth official potential winner is Ukraine. This is so freaking adorable. You're going to love this. It is so cute. It's probably got the best story on the LED. It's got a very clear like comic book story tale going on where we have a good girl and a bad boy, beautiful cityscapes. And then we have this like fight between the two of them with this like manga Japanese style cartoon art. It's really, really clever. She's amazing. She's got this really adorable stage presence. She sings really well. The chore choreography is really cute. I think this is gonna absolutely sweep up the under 10 vote. Anyone under the age of 10, I think is gonna absolutely adore this. It is really super cute. Again, Ukraine with immaculate staging, they really know what they're doing staging wise. So yeah, it's a little bit of an, a long shot, but it's quite similar to France and Spain. This is very much Ukraine getting the purpose of the competition, which is having really cool, fun, 
age-appropriate song with a really lovely message. So it ticks all the boxes in terms of what the contest is meant to be about. And that's why potentially if the jurors have been told, okay, this is what you're looking for, I can see this actually doing really, really well. So yeah, I don't think it's impossible that Ukraine gets their second win. Okay, so many winners. I know you're gonna say, Tom, this is this is too many people, eight, that's half the competition. <laughs> you're saying half the competition are winning. Look, if you ask me who do I think is taking up the trophy tomorrow, I think the sensible bet is France because it's so solid. They're doing something that we know will be has been successful before. So they're not reinventing the wheel. This is a formula that we know works already. So that is the sensible bet. But I like that we have all these risky entries amongst them. UK, Germany, Netherlands. I mean, these all have a risky element to them. And that risk is the special formula that can bring them above France. So I think it's going to be a really exciting show. It'll all be so clear in hindsight who the best people were. But genuinely, when at this point in time, from what I've seen and speaking to other people, it is not super obvious who will win. Like even I'm saying France, I'm less than 50% sure that it'll be them. Whereas this year, without Eurovision, it was France or Sweden. And then like we were 99% sure it would be one of those two. This is very different. It really could be anybody. And that's what makes the show so exciting. Overall, I think the show looks super cool very impressive the flag ceremony is great the hosts are fantastic the script isn't corny at all all the production cues the postcards are fantastic we have all of the artists using a superpower to help out the local from nice to overcome sort of some sort of problem and then that local person makes their flag from the activity so kind of like eurovision 2014 i would say the standard of the show is actually a little bit higher in many aspects than some of the previous adult Euro eurovision so really france just doing an incredible job whoever wins i think will really deserve it all of them sound great no dud performances I think all of the kids are being really well taken care of. They all look really happy. They're making friendships. They seem to be really bonding, doing like dances together and learning each other's songs. It's really sweet environment. Okay, so those are the <laughs> eight, sorry, eight people who I think can potentially win. You can maybe narrow it down. Who do you think is gonna win? Leave a comment for me in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to Richard from Seattle for supporting me on Buy Me Coffee and Arlo K for supporting me on PayPal and also Monzizia and Annika for giving me super thanks. Thank you so much for your support. But as always, thank you so much just for watching the channel. If you do want to support, I'll leave links for you in the description. And of course, thank you to all my wonderful Patreons who support me from all over the world. Your support means so much to me. Thank you very much. Don't forget to check out my Patreon where you can see early previews of some videos, previews of what videos I'm working on, and also the copyright free versions of my reaction videos. So go check that out. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on another Junior Eurovision reaction video very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>